What is the surgical anatomy of the gallbladder? What is the blood supply to the gallbladder? What's Kalo's triangle? What are the ducts of Lushka? What does the histology look like? These are all incredibly important questions. If you're gonna be a surgeon, you gotta know gallbladder anatomy. We're gonna do that today at Citizen Surgeon. Let's go. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name's Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon and I'm here to get you comfortable on the wards, in the ICU, in the operating room, and of course, on your exams. Today, we're gonna be talking about all things gallbladder. So let's get right into it. Why do we need to know the anatomy of the gallbladder? It seems it's just a green bag, right? No, no, it is not, okay? Well, it is a green bag, but there's a lot of complicated and subtle anatomy associated with the gallbladder, and we're gonna get into it. And some of those reasons are because in surgery and in medicine, there are a ton of different diagnoses that we see related to the gallbladder. We see gallstones. In the last video, I told you all about gallstones and bile and what bile is and why gallstones form. Solubility triangle, definitely check that out if you haven't already. So gallstones, symptomatic cholelithiasis. We have acute cholecystitis. We have chronic cholecystitis. We have acalculus cholecystitis. We got gallbladder polyps. We got gallbladder cancer. We have biliary dyskinesia. There are a ton of things that we have to consider and understanding those and then understanding the surgeries we do to remove the gallbladder. Well, you got to know the anatomy. Okay. So how do we start with the anatomy of the gallbladder? Well, check out this picture right here. Okay, so when we look at the gallbladder, we wanna look at it first in relation to the biliary tree. So we have the gallbladder. The gallbladder contains bile, okay? And that's gonna drain through the cystic duct where it joins the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct, all right? Well, above that, we see the common hepatic duct branches into the right hepatic duct, the right or posterior sectoral duct, and the left hepatic duct. How about distally? Well, after joining the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct, this travels distally to join with the pancreatic duct, ending up in that ampulla of vatter where we're draining into the second portion of the duodenum. Well, let's, let's focus in on the gallbladder itself. So the gallbladder itself, we have the fundus of the gallbladder, where it's the dome of the gallbladder. We have the infundibulum of the gallbladder or the neck of the gallbladder. Between that, we have the body of the gallbladder, then of course, the cystic duct. Another important way to look at the gallbladder is its relation to the liver, and then of course, the arterial supply and the venous drainage of the liver and the gallbladder biliary tree itself. Okay, so you can see that right here. Well, how is the gallbladder related to the segmental anatomy of the liver? Well, we can see that in this diagram right here, okay? so. We look at the segmental anatomy of the liver, and I'll go in this in detail in a liver anatomy talk, but if we look at the eight segments or the Coenard's anatomy of the liver, we see that the gallbladder lies in the gallbladder fossa, which on the posterior view, you can see is segments 4B and segment 5 of the liver. So that's the gallbladder fossa. When does that become really important? Well, that may be become important if you have a gallbladder adenocarcinoma and particularly on a specific stage, which we'll get into, you may have to resect segment 4B and segment 5 of the liver in order to get an adequate margin for that cancer resection. But we will definitely talk about that later. But I hope that gives you an idea of why it's important to understand this anatomy and specifically the relational anatomy or how a particular organ is related to those organs that surround it. So there are a few eponymous anatomical structures in hepatobiliary anatomy, and one of those is the ducts of Lushka. Okay, so the ducts of Lushka, Heinrich Lushka was a German anatomist, 1859, he described these, and they are two millimeters or smaller, so small ducts that lie in the subserosal surface of the liver, uh, right in that connective tissue of the gallbladder. They usually drain in the right hepatic duct or the subsegmental ducts 
of uh, segments four and five. But why are they important? Well, they're important because when we are taking the gallbladder from the gallbladder fossa in a open or a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, these ducts can be injured. And if these ducts are injured, you can get leakage of bile and then biliary peritonitis. So it's really important that when you're doing a laparoscopic or an open cholecystectomy that we stay in that plane between the gallbladder and the liver and that we don't injure the liver. So if you're a resident, you've heard your attending say, stay out of the liver, stay away from the liver. One of the reasons is bleeding, but the other reason is we don't want to injure these ducts of Lushka. They're present in about 10% of the population and that can lead to a adverse post-operative outcome with that biliary peritonitis and a bile leak. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is really critically important, and that is the blood supply to the gallbladder. So if I asked you, starting at the aorta, what is the blood supply to the gallbladder? How would you answer that? Now, the blood supply to any organ is a common question that I'm gonna ask medical students, that I'm gonna ask residents, because if you're taking that organ out, you have to be able to understand how you're gonna get vascular control. So let's get into the vascular anatomy of the gallbladder. And I like to look at this basically almost like stick figure theater is just to look at the various branches and how they evolve from their origin. Okay, so what is the origin artery? Well, that's the celiac trunk, okay? So that's the first anterior branch off of the abdominal aorta. Now, the celiac trunk is gonna branch into three arteries. So what are they? So you have the common hepatic artery, you have the splenic artery, then of course the left gastric artery, all right? The common hepatic artery, that's gonna branch again into now the proper hepatic artery and the gastroduodenal artery or the GDA. So now we have the proper hepatic artery and that's gonna head straight towards the liver. Now in this video, I'm not gonna talk about aberrant liver anatomy. If we talk about replaced right hepatic artery or a replaced left hepatic artery, we could talk about it, that in the liver anatomy video. But for now, let's just look at the normal or the typical arterial supply to the gallbladder. So after the common hepatic artery branches into the GDA and the proper hepatic artery, the proper hepatic artery is now gonna branch into the right hepatic artery and the left hepatic artery, okay? Now the right hepatic artery is going to be the origin in the vast majority of cases of the cystic artery and the cystic artery is the blood supply to the gallbladder. Now I say typical, okay, instead of the normal, all right, I use typical because the cystic artery can arise from the right hepatic artery or the left hepatic artery or the proper hepatic artery or even the gastroduodenal artery. So in the vast majority of cases, you're gonna see this off of right hepatic, but it's important to know that you can have variations. And as a pediatric surgeon, I almost consider that atypical is typical when I'm doing congenital uh, surgery in children. So now that we understand our vascular supply to the gallbladder, I wanna talk about triangles, all right? Now, in almost every general surgery operating room throughout the country, there has been the question asked, what is Kalo's triangle? Well, there are a few triangles with the gallbladder that we have to talk about, and some of them can be quite controversial, okay? So especially when we get to asking and defining Kalo's triangle. So before we get there, let's take a look at this diagram right here. So this is just showing the liver, the gallbladder, the cystic duct, and the cystic artery, the common hepatic duct as well. And we have this shaded area. Now, how many triangles do you see? All right, well, I see two triangles. All right, the first triangle is bounded by the cystic duct, the cystic artery, and the common hepatic duct. All right, well, what triangle is that? So this is Kalo's triangle as Kalo described it in his 1891 paper, okay? So the Kalo's triangle is the cystic duct, the cystic artery, and then medially the common hepatic duct, all right? Now, who was Jean-Francois Kalo? So he was a French surgeon born 
1861, lived until 1944, and he worked at the University of Paris. And he was, you know, it's quite an inspiration. He worked all over surgery. So back then we didn't have super subspecialists, specialists, or even, you know, general surgeons. You were a surgeon that covered everything. So he was an hepatobiliary specialist. He also described treatments for POTS disease or tuberculosis of the spine. Uh, and he also did war surgery and described orthopedic uh, fixation in war surgery. So he was all over, but what he is most known for probably is Kalo's Triangle. He described that in his doctoral dissertation, 1891. And this is what he described. So he described this triangle formed by the cystic duct, the common hepatic duct and the cystic artery, and that this would be important when you're removing the gallbladder. So what is the other triangle? All right. Well, the other triangle is seen right here. So we see this isosceles triangle. And going back to Kalo, he described his triangle as an isosceles triangle. So we see another one here. Well, what are the boundaries of this triangle? Well, superiorly, we have the inferior edge of the liver. Okay, laterally is the cystic duct, and then medially is the common hepatic duct. And through this triangle travels the cystic artery. So this is known as the hepatocystic triangle. It can also be known as the triangle of cholecystectomy. All right. And this is important. It's not Kalo's triangle, but it's important in relation to something that we dictate and that we look for in almost every cholecystectomy. And that is this right here. And so this right here is what we call the critical view of safety. Well, what is the critical view of safety? Now, this is absolutely important if you're doing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, and we do this to avoid common bile duct injuries. The critical view of safety is when all of the connective tissue around the cystic duct and the cystic artery has been dissected and removed so that when the gallbladder is retracted laterally, the only thing that you can see is the cystic duct, the cystic artery, and the bed of the liver, okay? Now, I like to dissect that at least a third or 33% up on the surface of the gallbladder so you can see all of this very clearly before any structures are ligated and divided. So important anatomy there, the hepatocystic triangle, the triangle of cholecystectomy, or the critical view of safety, however you look at it, this is really important when it comes to avoiding common bile duct injuries. And then we'll talk about that in that cholecystectomy talk that we got coming up in a few weeks. So we need to jump to something that not everybody's excited about, but you gotta know, and this is, well, what is the lining of the gallbladder? We're getting into histology, and the gallbladder histology is a little interesting, right? Because we see cholecystitis and inflammation, and you should understand, well, why is it that, that the gallbladder is particularly prone to that. Okay, so we're gonna get into that. So what is the lining of the gallbladder? So the lining of the gallbladder is epithelial lining. It's a single layer of columnar epithelium, and those columnar cells have microvilli, and those microvilli, much like the small intestine microvilli, increase the surface area for absorption of water and electrolytes. Like I said, the lining of the gallbladder is particularly sensitive to inflammation. I'm gonna give you some reasons for that in a few minutes here. So let's look at the different cells. So we have columnar cells. Those columnar cells, as I said, have microvilli. We have mucosa cells. We have goblet cells, and then we have interstitial cells, all right? Now, I don't wanna to get too deep into histology, but I do want you to understand single layer columnar epithelium with microvilli, and now, getting to that point. So why are they particularly prone to inflammation? Well, the gallbladder mucosa is constantly exposed to bile. Sometimes that bile has gallstones, okay? If you have supersaturated cholesterol or bilirubin like we talked about last time. Now, what is bile? Well, bile is a digestive fluid, so it's meant to break down fats. So the gallbladder mucosa is constantly exposed to that. So that is one reason that is prone to inflammation. Well, what else? Well, the gallbladder does not have a really thick protective layer of mucosa. It has a rather thin layer of protected mucosa. 
Third is that the gallbladder is constantly exposed to different pressures. You know, in a fatty meal, that CCK or cholecystokinin is gonna be released and that's gonna cause contraction of the gallbladder. Maybe you have an obstructing stone or obstructing sludge and the pressure is gonna go way up when that gallbladder contracts, all right? And then finally, the gallbladder has a relatively poor blood supply. We talked about this big trunk, the celiac trunk, dividing into the all those various arteries, but it's just that final cystic artery that supplies the gallbladder. And so that's a relatively poor blood supply for the size and the surface area. Taking these things into consideration, you get the idea of why inflammation, cholecystitis of the gallbladder is quite common. So finally, I wanna talk about the atypical anatomy of the gallbladder. So like I said, congenital surgery as a pediatric surgeon, atypical is typical. Okay, well, we gotta know the different anatomical variations. So what are the expected variations of the gallbladder? Well, you can have an ectopic gallbladder. So the gallbladder may not be in that gallbladder faucet. It may be in different places uh, throughout the abdomen, okay? You can have a duplicated gallbladder. You can have a pharyngean cap. So a pharyngean cap is a protrusion along the dome of the gallbladder, and sometimes that can be mistaken for gallstones. A patient can have a multi-septated gallbladder where there are different septa or different walls within the gallbladder. You can have aberrant cystic artery. So as we talked about, this cystic artery may come not from the right hepatic artery, but perhaps from the left, the proper hepatic or the gastroduodenal artery. And then we can have variations in our cystic duct anatomy, okay? So you might have low insertion of the cystic duct. The cystic duct may parallel the common bile duct and insert closer down posterior to the pancreas, okay? You may have a duplicated cystic duct. So all of these things are very important to consider when we have a patient that has a gallbladder problem and we have made a cho choice to take that gallbladder out. So today we talked about all things gallbladder. We talked about the gallbladder anatomy, okay? We talked about its relationship to the biliary tree. We talked about its relationship to the segmental anatomy of the liver. So segments four, B and five, that gallbladder fossa, all right? We talked about the blood supply of the gallbladder and we talked about those really important triangles, both Calot's triangle as well as that hepatocystic triangle or the triangle of cholecystectomy or the critical view of safety, however you wanna look at that, all right? We also talked about the line in the gallbladder and we talked about atypical anatomy. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like, give it a share, leave me a comment, let me know what did you like, what value did you get, check out citizensurgeon.com. I'm starting to populate that with a lot of great information, some valuable resources, the four important takeaways, and then show notes from this video and you can get all the references. So again, I love it that you're here. Thanks for being part of my community. And as always, stay safe, study hard. I'll see you next time.